Hi, I'm going to do an end of night trade for you and carry on with something I've been doing most of the day. Roll the intro, see you on the other side. Hi, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers and I am the overgrown child that is the scruffy trader. Sorry, I do love my toys. But I also love the screens. And what I'm trying to do with those screens is kind of put trading in the real world. It's no fake Lamborghinis or anything like that here. You ding dong! <laughs> it's just me. Cup of coffee charts and I try and show you little snippets of what I do throughout the day and hopefully teach you a thing or two along the way I shouldn't say teach because I'm not a teacher I have no desire to be a teacher or anything like that if you have enjoyment from what I do and you pick something up fantastic that is the whole intention of the channel isn't that logical and if that sounds good please click the little subscribe button genuinely helps and if you've got a query just drop it in the comments below and I genuinely get back to you so what am I doing today well it's the end of the night it's closing on for tea time so I'm come home from the office and I'm gonna pull my screens up and I'm gonna quickly see if I can grab 10 pips just to show you that you can do it after work but I've also had a trade running throughout the day um, I'll pull up my screen you can kind of see what I've done during the day I've been looking at the Nasdaq the US 100 and I've done quite well with it and I have one position that's left over that needs a little bit of managing so I'm gonna have a little look at that as well and see if I can end on a decent profit and have all of my trades flat because it's closing on to the weekend there's going to be a big news event this weekend and I don't want to be involved in the markets till I know what's being said so with all of that let's jump on the screens and see what we can find okay guys so I've come onto my charts and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly see if we can get 10 pips at the end of the night. I've had a reasonable day. I need to average in on the US 100, which I am going to do right now. Uh, bear with me half a second because I want to catch that. It's just bouncing off the level that I marked in. So across to there. Do, 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 do. I just want to put a, a quick order in above the current position and I want to get it up to there okay happy days right method in the madness this has already paid me very well um, I've had a good day on the US 100 there we are it's been oscillating around but my belief is that it's coming up around this area so if I can get that in, then the idea of when you average in, your stop is always in the same place. You're just putting an extra order in at a better price. Okay. And let's see. As you can see, I've had a pretty good day to day. All right. Straight into profit. All right. If it goes against me, well, it just costs me a few quid. It's, it's nothing really to worry about. It. All right. But when you are putting in an order like this where it is further down than the initial order what it does is it helps your risk reward because your stops in the same place so by nature the risk is less and it runs up to target gives you a little bit more juice in the tank so that one's fine that's something I've been looking at all day I've been speaking to the guys in the scruffy squad and I told them I was going to trade this 
about nine o'clock this morning and I didn't start getting into it till after lunch okay likewise with cable but today's exercise is to see if we can get you 10 pips at the end of the night okay so let us have a look before I do I'll just show you what time it is uh, da, 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 drop that on the five minute candle uh, I do keep an eye on the 15 minute mainly it is five past five on the 10th of December and the reason why I'm kind of looking at this time at night is because I picked up a message from one of the guys saying that the DAX should start buoyant up to about seven o'clock but you don't have to trade the DAX you could trade anything as long as it has movement now what you're looking at at this moment in time is kind of my sort of watch list window of the world if you want to call it that it's normally my nickname for it because it's multiple markets and I can see what's going on as correlations and straight away when I'm looking at these I'm looking for a certain criteria and the DAX has had it see there's a massive drop there so there has to be a reaction which there is but the one that's catching my eye the most is oil okay I know you could say gold as well but gold's relatively slow moving in relation to these markets here and if you're just wanting a quick 10 pips you want something that's going to shift so what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at oil because it's the best of the candidates that's in front of us and why is that because you can see the extreme move and it's now starting to reject whereas this is, has a little bit of chop within it I could take a trade to the long side to try and push it up to there but I've only got about where we are 84 I've got about 15 ticks to play with wriggle room whereas from there down to there I've got loads of ticks to play with so this is the best candidate and as you can see that trade that we've just put in is pushing up just as I quickly said it would so we're going to trade two of them at once okay so let me drop it down onto oil and let us have a look at this bad boy okay so we're looking at the hourly what do we see super drive up can't deny that so we need some levels well there's one there how do we know we can see it's a turning point and it's chipped away and that is the last one to the price there's another one up there so we now have our trading arena okay very simple how do i know where to get in well very simple this thing is going down there is where it stopped before and it well, never stopped it just kept on going there's a good point this is going to retrace a good half way it often does all right so just get a fit how far do i want this to go well there we are see it's bouncing on a fib line lovely jubbly all right i've actually drew that in backwards that up there move it across it's just broke the 23 have i got room to get down to there of course i have all right sell it see that's 17 ticks if i move that to 10 you've got loads of room okay so we know just by looking at it and using a basic measuring tool that I have room to get my 10 ticks if I am pushing down so let's have another look go down to the 15 minute what's happening super drive up and it is pushing down clearly there's no point doing a candle count here because it's a steep line take it into five minute so you can see what's going on there's your drive you do your candle count here one two three four five so you want to be at the base of that put an order in down under there 10 ticks happy days
leave it. So what have we done? Well, it's very simple. You defined two levels. Right. These are reasonable levels to assume because the price has reacted at it in the here and now. Because this is what we're doing. We're trying to just get in and get out. Right. So the levels you want to be working to is what people are looking at now. And if that price has gone up, bounced, and come away, that means somebody's looking at it. Something's caused this to turn. And those levels, like here, that went up and it surely shot away. That went up and it is now turning round. So something is happening between these two levels. Okay? So that's all I'm interested in at the moment. Right? The next part was working out what is happening. Well, it's reasonable to assume that it could go down to here. All right? But is that pushing the boat out too much? I want 10 ticks. That's all I want. All right? I just want to get in, get 10 ticks, get out. Simple as that. All right? And I don't think I can make it any clearer. But the way it's broken down is quite simple. You see the move. You see the rejection. You've got two levels to work to. Go down to the 15 minute to see what's going on. Well, in the 15 minute, you can see that there's a lot of down pressure. How do I know it's down pressure? Well, they're all red for a start, so that helps you. This here, this tail, which is the current here and now, the last 15 minutes, is showing you it's pushing down okay because there's a tail at the top and there's nothing at the bottom so it's pushing like so all right drop it to a five minute so again you can see what you are doing and again you can see all of how that's made up just looking at it it is all red well that tells you that this thing is trucking why did I do a candle count? Well, because it had leveled out. And I want the price to come to me. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And you just put it at the base of the candle. And that is it. Very, very simple. And then what you're hoping it'll do is just push straight into your 10 ticks. And the reason being, it's selling down. Now, how do you manage stops and things like that? I've told you before. If it breaks up here, you've got it wrong. All right? So you want to be looking to get out. So a little bit like what I'm doing with the US Tech. If this moves up to, say, there, because that's a reasonable logic point. Here. You could put another order in there, but you stop still up here. So this one costs you half as much as that one. And put your target, same place. Comes down, you've had a decent reward. It just meant that you didn't quite get in at the right place before. All right? So you're just managing your trade. And you could even put another one under here. You know, where, where are we at? So another order there stop still up there so that would be next to nothing if it came up bounced and then just shot down simple stuff guys you know it's just about managing your trade so we know this one's ticking away let's have a look see what's happening on the other side well it's still in profit so quite happy with that don't need any of these these on. Let's get rid of them. And we'll get rid of that fib. For this one, I used fibs to get my targets. I did pick up a, a comment about fibs saying that I use them on some and, and on others I don't. I use fibs all the time. Um, I mainly use it as a measuring tool and 
that is it but what I try to show you with the live trades is just to show you it can be done all right it's not to sort of bamboozle you with science and show you a walk through um, everybody trades in their own way I certainly have my own way um, you need to figure it out yourself because there's no one fits all I will trade the chart depending on the conditions that I'm looking at okay and sometimes I need a fib sometimes I just need support well I always use support and resistance doesn't matter what I'm doing it always has levels within it I know what the levels are but I use Bollinger Bands I use an RSI I can use pivot points I can use the ATR there's many different things that I do it's almost like a mechanic fixing an engine he doesn't just use one screwdriver and an adjustable spanner he has a number of tools in his tool bag and he just applies the right tool to the right job so that's what I do and for those that want to see more of it you'll see it in the scruffy squad because uh, I go right through it I, I genuinely do and if those guys ask me I do my best to answer you know but again it all just comes down to basic stuff guys you know there is no magic formula in trading none whatsoever and if you believe that there is that all you have to do is just press a couple of buttons and you're going to be rich you're delusional it doesn't work like that trading has been the same since adam was a lad it is about support and resistance and movement of price that is it and i know that sounds bland and you go well of course it's that but that's exactly it it's no different than a retailer he buys a product for eight pounds he sells it for ten pounds and he's made a little bit of profit trading is exactly the same you look at what it is and you're willing to risk x amount of money to get x amount of money back and it's that simple you could trade flicking a coin you genuinely could and in my experience of the markets and I've been in and around them a long time and certainly the guys who I know that are successful are pretty much similar in the sense that they keep their charts very clean and they trade mainly with levels and the price action itself the rest of it are just guides to help you but like I say if you think that trading is just a strange concoction of indicators and when this moving average crosses that one that's it you're going to be rich no you know you need to understand how the price moves so what we'll do is we'll just see if this one works out because uh, my belly thinks my throat's being cut by not having enough coffee today so what we'll do is I'll, put, I'll tell you what I'll put the two of them side by side rather than looking at sort of eight screens uh, that one's doing okay this one could be better but that's just the nature of the beast okay there we are so two markets kind of watch them both roughly the same way okay so what we'll do because uh, I don't really want to sit on this one overnight. I'm kind of target that to there. So we'll little target in there. So they're both targeted. Okay. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, it shouldn't take too long.
Okay guys, it's been a, an odd night, uh, it's now getting on for quarter past six, been a long day and you've also caught a little bit of negative averaging. What does that mean? It means buy, buying back into the market as the market goes against you. Now, as I've told you before, that is the art of trading. The art of trading is not so much getting in and getting out. It's managing the trade and it doesn't matter what direction it goes in as long as you know how to manage it. Now what I'm going to do at this moment in time because it is getting on to the end of the night and I pretty much want to have a day off tomorrow because I don't like to trade on a Friday. Uh, I'll show you what time it is. There it is there. It's 10 past 6 on the 10th I'm gonna kill these off uh, simply because I know I can pay it off and not get a loss and I'm starting to see this struggle on my other screen um, it could well push into this so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to pull up the stop right up underneath here like so for that the stop for the overall trade was this dotted red line. I'm going to kill off this particular trade. So it is completely finished. And whatever happens, this trade is already paying this one off. So even if this comes and stops me out, I know my net profit is positive and that is the art of trading you know uh, it's just i want to trail this up i want to keep it pretty tight like say that's 136 so if this comes back and stops it's going to be kind of break evenish between these two um but i've had a a pretty darn good day uh, as you can see it's it's not been bad at all and it looks a lot but it's not it's pretty much just a, a couple of trades that have been managed throughout the day and as I say that is the art of of trading now this looks like it's it, it's having a bit of a tussle and the reason why I know that the bodies are getting smaller and as you can see there's like a little bit of indecision to a degree here now if i close these both off at this point it's about another 80 quid in the bag but if i let it come back it'll be well significantly less um maybe it's about break even if it comes back so the question i've got to ask myself is do i want to sit on this for another hour or do I just want to kill it and take my money? Well, I think one of the sensible things to do, looking at the red candle forming, is just to kill off this trade. Or at least take half of it off. You know, so if we go £2.50, like so, we have just netted our profit. And what we want to do now see it is moving down so it was actually probably the right choice to make yeah it's going to stop out okay okay is it going to stop out pretty close but we've got a little bit to run so what we'll do is we'll try and see if these two equal out all right it's got a bit of work to do because obviously it needs to go up uh, quite a bit at two pound fifty but we're in profit in a net if we lose then we lose I'm not going to stress about it because I know my net profit is positive I've been paid for today I was trying to squeeze a little bit extra out of it which is 
what the last part of that trade was. Um, market conditions change as they often do, but as you can see, the trade premise is still correct. I still think this is going up. Okay. Um, the only thing is, I just don't want to sit on it all night. Um, this is where I'm expecting the thing to go. So I can either hold it or kill it. Um, and like I say, I want a day off tomorrow and I don't want any stress of this overnight. And tomorrow, because of current news events, is I want to be flat on every position I have. Swing trades, day trades, everything. I want nothing in the market tomorrow. Uh, and the reason being is the Brexit decision is going to be Sunday night. And I don't want to be caught across a weekend with an unknown decision going into Monday. And it, it's really that simple, guys, because it could throw the market dramatically this week. Bear with me. I shall come back to you in a second. Sorry about that, guys. I hate them telly salespeople. Okay. So what to do? What to do? What to do indeed? Well, I'm going to let this candle play out. And we shall see if I can get it into break even between the two I'm just gonna close the pair of them off or at least close the top one off anyway let's have a look yep looks like it might right let us have a look let us see see what we should do so if I can push up five ticks or so it might well get break even. Okay, guys, we're going to kill this off because we're in a positive position. And that is that. Done. So there we go. We're done for the night. Uh, I got my quick 10 ticks that I was looking for out of oil. Uh, which I shall show you. Uh, that is that. And I've managed my way out of that US trade, which ended up being a net profit of £106 because these two paid each other off. And that's one of the things about trading. It's getting to know how to manage out of a bad trade. And it's not, that's maybe the wrong thing to say. I shouldn't really call it a bad trade. Because it's not a bad trade. All trades are good. So just bear with me a second. Uh, as you can see, that's now turning round. So it's possibly the right choice to make. So happy days. Um, it's been an interesting day, as most days are. I genuinely, genuinely love these charts. I can spend all day just watching the movement. I really can. But that's not the idea of trading. Trading is to give you time freedom rather than financial freedom. No way! And for me, I can do what I like when I like. I just choose to sit in front of these screens. Maybe it's why I've got such a large belly. Or maybe I'm just in training to be Santa Claus. <laughs> so it's been great. Ended the day quite well. Uh, having a day off tomorrow. If you've got any queries, by all means, drop it in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button. All that good stuff genuinely helps. And if you wanted to contact me, all my details are in the description. So... Stay safe, everybody, and remember, do what you love, and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.